and happy blessed Sabbath. It is always a great pleasure to be here in the Lord's house on a Sabbath, on a Sabbath day, particularly at the beginning of the Sabbath. I do not know what kind of uh, six days that you've had, but uh, God has provided for us that we can have this Sabbath rest. So I would like to welcome each and every one of us, those who are in the church, or those who may be watching from uh, all over the world at different times, feel most welcome under the feet of Jesus. Uh, today, uh, we have the servant of the Lord, our elder, Joe jo Nyakundi, who is going to deliver the word, and I would like to welcome him. But before we do so, shall we have a word of prayer? Almighty loving Father, we come to you at this time because you are our God. And because we recognize that without you, we can do nothing. So Lord, we just would like to submit ourselves particularly at the beginning of this Sabbath day, that, Lord, you may lead us in everything that we do, in everything that we say, that, Lord, we may glorify your name. Thank you for the Sabbath day that you've given to us, that, Lord, we can rest and fellowship together. May you be with us throughout this day, for we ask in the blessed name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, I would like now to... Welcome our elder, Elder Jonya Kundi, to come and break the bread of life. Thank you.
Thank you, uh, my elder, Elder Raphael, for that introduction. Uh, we uh, d- we delighted to be in the house of the Lord. Today being uh, the 21st, which is the third week of the month of uh, January, the year 2022. Uh, we thank God for having enabled us to be here. Today we... We are actually in the Sabbath, and we thank God for a Sabbath rest that has come. We don't take it for granted because there are many of us who might not have seen this Sabbath day today. We are going to share today from the book of Exodus, Exodus chapter 23, verses 20 to 23, and then verses 25 to 27. The title of the message being uh, Trust and Obey. Trust and Obey. Brothers and sisters, those that are watching online and the ones that are here in church, we know that uh, our God is a true God. We are Christians by choice, not because anybody forced us to be Christians, but we ourselves volunteer to be Christians. And Christianity is obedience to God. There's no way that you can be a Christian and not be obedient uh, to God that we worship. Uh, it's also uh, a way of trusting him that we continue being referred not only as Christians, but as we practice about uh, who our God is. We also uh, uh, come before him because we know who he is. And uh, we know what he likes and what he doesn't like. And we, have, we walk with him in this life and in life to come based on what we understand about our Lord in Christianity. Now, as we read from the book of Exodus, chapter 23, verses 20 to 23, just to understand uh, our God and who he is and what he does and what he did for his children. This is a story of uh, God talking to the children of Israel just after they, they themselves they have yet walked with them and referred to them, and even they had already tested who this God is. And this is what the Bible says about, uh, God, about God himself by virtue of what he told them. And as I read uh, from verse 20 from the book of NIV, it says, See, I'm sending an angel ahead of you to guide you along the way and to bring you to the place I have prepared. Pay attention to him and listen to what he says. Do not rebel against him. He will not forgive your rebellion, since my name is in him. If you listen carefully to what he says and do all that I say, I will be an enemy to your enemies and will oppose those who oppose you. Verse 23, my angel will go ahead of you and bring you into the land of the Amorites, Hittites, Pedicites, Canaanites, Havites, Jebusites, and I will wipe them out. Verse 25 says, Worship the Lord your God, and his blessing will be on your food and water. I will take away sickness from among you, and none will miscarry or be barren in your land. I will give you a full lifespan. Verse 27 I will send my terror ahead of you and throw into confusion every nation you encounter. I will make all your enemies turn their back and run. Amen. This is the God that we worship. This God is talking to the children of Israel and is telling them what he can do for them. He is telling them that they are not going to go alone where they are going, that he's going to go them, he's going to go with them by virtue of uh, sending 
the angel to go to walk ahead of them. You can imagine they were, they were going to a land that had not been before, and they're going to a land, and they knew that ahead of them there will be challenges in terms of uh, those that they're going to meet. And in fact, if, if you were in their shoes today, you can imagine how terrified you'll be. But here is God assuring them that he is going to give them an angel. All they needed to do was listen to the angel and do what the angel says. Number one, the, Bi the Bible talks about angels because we have read here that God was going to attend to send an angel to go with the children of Israel. Let's look about what the, let's look about talk about what the angels are talked about in the Bible. Number one, in the book of Hebrews, chapter one, verse fourteen, uh, it says that are not angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? As ministering, ministering spirits, angels serve believers in several ways. The first one, uh, angels are sent to answer prayers. And we have given an example of uh, Peter. When Peter was imprisoned, uh, the church at that time was earnestly praying for him. Uh, and suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared and light shone in the cell. Uh, and the Bible tells us that Peter himself was rescued. Number two, angels are sent to encourage believers. We get that from the book of Matthew chapter 4, verse 11, and Luke 23 verse 43. And this is what it says. Angels encouraged and attended to the Lord Jesus Christ at least after he was tempted in the desert. In the same way that uh, the angel uh, sent to encourage believers, we look at the book of Acts chapter 27 verse 23 and 24. It says that Paul was encouraged by an angel during a storm at sea. Number three, angels provide protection for believers. And what is the reference is made here to the book of Second Kings, chapter 6, uh, whereby angels are mentioned to have surrounded Elisha, protecting him from Arame Arameans. And finally here we see, that, uh, we see that Daniel was protected in the lion's den by an angel who shut the mouths of the lions. We get that from Daniel 6, verse 21. Now, from the verses that we have read from the, the book of Exodus, chapter 23, verses 23 to 24, and verses 25 to 27, what is God promising these children of Israel? We find that the first one is that uh, he himself, God, is sending an angel ahead of them. Uh, and not only sending an angel, but they say it there that he's go the angel is going to guide them along the way. And one, first of all, the children of Israel don't know how the distance between where they were and where they were going but they believe that God who had sent the angel is going to guard them. And I can imagine a situation whereby God is telling you, maybe if you are traveling within even our own country here to a place that you don't know, but you have heard about it, and you are assured that nothing, whether there are roads or there are no roads, but God assures you that you reach there because he gives you protection. You'll move without any hesitation and you'll feel that you are free because God has said it. Uh, Having full knowledge of who angels are, that they are going ahead of them, and God was providing protection, uh, that indeed was an assurance for the children of Israel. The second one, it says that he will bring them to the place that he had promised. In other words, what God was saying that don't worry about what is going to happen. Don't worry about anything that you might think about that might hinder you from going. For sure, you are going to reach where... I had promised. Then God also says here that he will be an enemy to their enemies and oppose who those who oppose them. You can imagine God himself being an enemy to your enemy. No, all of us, even as we grow, we, are, we, we encounter enemies. We have enemies. And sometimes we don't know how to handle our enemies because an enemy is somebody that you yourself, you are not sure what, is, what action they are going to take or what the intentions are for you in many ways, because enemies sometimes don't come physically. Sometimes they also come, uh, use other means, either to harm you or to destroy whatever you do. But God is saying here and assuring these children of Israel that he himself is an enemy to the enemies of them. 
meaning that is 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 actually an assurance here yeah, that uh, the children of Israel were not to be worried about enemies because their God was has taken care of them. And I was imagining that in uh, to, in today's world we grow with enemies, but as long as we walk with our God, God is in control. So we should not be worried on how whether we have enemies. We have no enemies because God is in control. And then God tells them that I will bless your food and I will bless your water. I was imagining even when I was reading this one that uh, God is saying he will bless their food and he will bless their water. First of all, remember they were, they were walking yeah, and they, they can run out of food and they can run out of water. But the fact that God, God says that he's going to bless means he's also going to provide. He will provide the food and he will provide the water. Not only that, that he will bless. What an assurance it is. Because in that way, you know, we exist because we eat. If there is no food, we can't exist. There is no way that they are going to reach the promised land if they have no food. They will die in the desert if they have no water. But God is telling them that I will bless that food and I will bless that water. Uh, that, uh, but that not only they will have, but also blessings will flow in that direction of food and water. Now, another promise that God gave them was that he will take away sickness. And when I was reading about this, that he will take away sickness, I was imagining this, where we are today because we are passing through. Uh, remember there was SARS and then there was uh, another uh, kind of flu that came. Now we are in the situation where we have corona for the last two years. But God is telling them that he will take away sickness. means they should not be worried that any one of them will be sick. Remember, uh, they are moving from place to place. They are not in one place. So they are likely to get flu. They are likely to get uh, malaria if there was malaria those days. They are likely to get typhoid because sometimes if we are told that if you don't eat properly or don't drink proper water, you will take ty you get typhoid. But God assures them that you will take away the sickness. So as long as uh, they are with God, there will be no sickness. Yeah, one of the biggest challenges and worries in the world today is sickness because uh, many, many people in the world are sick, and uh, even sickness has got brackets. You know, there's uh, the sickness that is, that is terminal, there's sickness that is in between terminal and any other. Uh, I mean, in between terminal and uh, these short-term sicknesses. Uh, that is why we have many types of uh, drugs that treat this, and there are some that are not treatable. Uh, but God is telling them uh, he'll take away everything in total. And uh, by, t by this one, the children of Israel need to assure that they should not be worried about being sick. God also, uh, God also promised them that none will miscarry or be barren. Remember, uh, miscarrying comes because of uh, certain uh, biological factors that go through women when they, they, they have already conceived. And uh, even barrenness comes uh, because maybe some formation in the system didn't come up properly. But God is telling them there will be no miscarrying and there will be no barrenness in women. So meaning that they are assured that generations will grow, that people, uh, children will, will be born and uh, Population will grow and they'll occupy the land in which they will go, uh, which is an assurance that they should not be worried in any way about some families growing, others not growing, because all of them will have babies and they will grow. Uh, and then he, saw, he also assured them that he'll, they will have life, full, full lifespan. You know, uh, when when you are told that you have full lifespan, it means that uh, the age, the average age now, these days is 70 years. So you can imagine a situation whereby everybody knows that I will be 70. Yeah? So you know, when you know that you'll be 70, some people might do good things today, or others might do wrong things. Because if I know that I'll be 70, I'll start doing things now that maybe are bad, so that I start uh, going back to God when I'm about 60 or I'm about to die. Uh, but God was telling them, look, don't worry about your age. Don't worry about how long you live. Everybody will live 
up to the end, according to the age that I've, according to the lifespan that I've given you, which is an assurance that indeed, as long as uh, they trusted God, God assured them that indeed you live up to the end. What an assurance that uh, we see uh, God giving them, and God is, can give any Christian who, who walks with, with him. And then here, God is saying, make you'll make all enemies stand back and run. If you have no enemies, you'll, you'll be in peace. Because even, even the doors where you sleep, you'll open doors. Where you, you open windows, there'll be no gates. There'll not be gated communities because we'll not have enemies. Uh, we'll, have, we'll, very, we'll be very peaceful and we have nothing to worry about because God himself has taken care of our enemies because he's saying, Rather, he told them, those children of Israel, that I will make all enemies stand back and run. So anybody you see that you think is an enemy will not be your enemy because God will already have been neutralized that person. Now, uh, this, that is what God told them. But also God expected them to do certain things uh, for them to earn what God has said. And one of them, he told them four things. The first one, uh, he asked ask them that you, they were to pay attention to the angel. You know, paying attention means that they were to listen to what the angel has said and the, what the angel requires carefully. Means, if, if you, if, assuming there was, there was, you are not in a meeting and uh, you come and find that certain things have been said, it's for you now to go and catch up with uh, what has been said so that you know what is required. And then number two was he said here that they were to listen to what he was to say. You know, it's one thing to pay attention, another one to listen. So when you listen means you listen in a positive way with an intention to do something about what, what you have heard. And number three, they were not to rebel against him. And in fact, it, the Bible says that once they, if, if, they, if they rebelled, they will were, they were not be forgiven. Now, rebellion comes. We have seen rebellions, physical rebellions in countries uh, where people are dissatisfied. We have seen rebellions in schools. We have even seen rebellions in families. But this one was a rebellion against God himself. Because the angel, uh, the Bible says that God was with that angel. Meaning, whatever the angel was speaking was not speaking uh, with their own words. They were speaking the words of God. So if the Israelites were to rebel, they were not to be forgiven. That one they were told from the beginning. And finally they were told that they were to worship the Lord, their God. Only four. They were to benefit so much, but they're only supposed to adhere to the four requirements. Now, uh, there's one gentleman by the name of John H. Samis. John H. Summers, who lived between 1846 to 1919, uh, wrote 100 hymns. Uh, among these hymns is the hymn that we sing in uh, our SD hymnal, hymn number 590. Hymn number 590 talks about trust and obey. All the children of Israel, what they were expected was to trust God and obey. And once they trusted God and obeyed, then they, they would be able to, the, prom, the promises brought, be, given to them, they were going to be fulfilled. So I would like to sing one stanza of this song, Trust and Obey, stanza number one, uh, which, I, which I believe goes this way. Uh, and uh, just one stanza. It says this, when we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still, and what all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. This hymn talks about trusting and obey. 
it also makes reference that the only way that you can be happy in Jesus is to trust and obey him. Those, these children of Israel actually were meant to trust and obey what they were told. And obedience was not only going to take them to the promised land, the obedience that we are talking about here was going to see them through uh, all that was promised, was promised, including taking away their sickness, uh, blessed, blessed, God blessing their food and water, God uh, being an enemy to the enemies, as long as they trusted and they obeyed. Because the, 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 the right of the song starts by saying that if we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, and the word uh, of word promises that God will not leave us, nor will he leave forsake us. Only what we need to do is to trust and obey. And there God will be able to uh, be a friend, our, our friend, and an enemy uh, to our enemies. Friends, our God never changes. What he promised the children of Israel that we have read here is what is applicable to us today. Uh, in the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 8, uh, it says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he was the same yesterday, and if he's the same today, and if he's the same for days to come, why then uh, can we walk with him based on the promises that he has promised us, the same way that he promised the children of Israel? Uh, I think what, one of the things that destroy a lot of Christians uh, today is because of lack of knowledge of who God is. Uh, and that is made reference to in the book of Hosea 4, 6, that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And the knowledge of God is found in his, in his Bible, in this book of the Bible. Uh, all we need to do is that uh, we need to uh, walk through the Bible from the book of uh, Genesis to Revelation understand that this God that is being talked about, this God that is made is being ref, referenced, who is he and what can he do? And whether these promises that he has promised, including the ones that I've just gone through uh, in this uh, Exodus chapter 23, from verse 23 to 24 and 25 to 27, to 27, whether these promises are true. And the only way that we can know whether these promises are true is for us to uh, read through and see that were they fulfilled. And if they were not fulfilled, what happened? Yeah? Because all of us, uh, uh, we, we can know that God is our God as long as we, we read his word and be, we, are pay, we pay attention to him. And paying attention to our God uh, means that we walk in his light, just like the, the writer of the song has written, and then we listen to what he has to say through the, his word. And God talks to us through the word that is written in our Bible. And also uh, that once we have accepted him in our lives, we as become lights. that We can take the word of God to others. That indeed if we have experienced him, others can see through us and also come to join, uh, uh, to join our, the as, to join as Christians. There are times, uh, as we can see, that uh, uh, people uh, might be asking, maybe somebody was just baptized the other day, or somebody has been a Christian throughout their lives, and uh, yeah, the person might have read through the Bible and seen the various promises that God has promised his children. And then for this person, nothing has worked. Oh, this person is still struggling. He was struggling last year. He has been struggling five years down the line, and nothing seems to work. Now, if that is you now, uh, might be listening this uh, evening, I think there are things that we need to follow to find out whether indeed we are with God. Because sometimes there are times that we assume that God is with us, yet he has left. What you need to do is just check on... Uh, what God has promised. Check on those, all those promises that indeed God has promised. If he has promised this, do we fall within those promises that God has promised? You need to check on uh, 
uh, your confessions? How do you confess? What is it that is coming out of your mouth? Because everything that comes out of my, our mouths should be God-exalting. If it's not God-exalting, then you need to go back and make sure that uh, your confessions are God-exalting. Because it's important to know everything that uh, uh, you say as, as, a, as a consequence. You also need to check on your fellowship. Where do you get the word of God? Is it from the, the, the Bible? Is it from elsewhere that people have written and uh, distorted the Bible? Is it that you listen, maybe to, you might be listening to this uh, modern, uh, can I, I don't know whether I should call them modern, but uh, these many pastors that come on TV and twist the message of God to the extent that uh, they want to make it suitable to the audience that they are targeting. Uh, you, it's very important that you check where you get the word of God. You also need to be obedient to what the word says because there's no way that uh, you, you can get God's blessings if indeed uh, you yourself uh, you are not obedient to the word of God. You need to do what exactly it says. You also need to check on your life. You know, remember the life of King Saul. King Saul walked with God, but the, it reached a stage whereby he, f he forgot that uh, all that he was doing, all his successes, depended on God himself. And then he started doing things by using, him, using his, his own thoughts and his own uh, uh, he's thinking that he, his, his own physique, but uh, he forgot that uh, everything that he had or dad or, or his successes came from God. That is a weakness sometimes that comes to all of us, that sometimes we forget that everything that we do and everything that we have comes from God. As long as we don't check on our lives, and as long as we con continue uh, uh, attributing every success to the to the sacrifices that we make, then we have lost it. And that is how King, uh, King uh, Saul lost it. Uh, we also need to check on our praises. If indeed you are, we are offering praises, you need to check what kind of praises that you, we are offering. Because uh, God, we need to thank God for each and everything that he continues doing for, to us. Because it's God that enables us. When you sleep and wake up in the morning, it's not because you ate well, you ate uh, maybe salads, you ate uh, food that is going well in the, in the system. No. You woke up because God has enabled you to wake up. If you, you are successful in business, you need to thank God because it's God that enables you to succeed. If you got a promotion in your workplace, it is God that has enabled you to get that promotion, and you need to thank him. So we need to check on how, what kind of praises and whom do we praise because there are times that we forget that it's God that has made us successful and we start praising human beings. And when we praise human beings, which it means that you have forgotten that it's God that has given the success and now the human beings are the ones that are, 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 are successful on their own. Now finally, uh, it's good to check on things uh, that uh, you might have fallen into yeah? through your network. Yeah? Who, who do you surround yourself with? You know, sometimes there are times that we forget that uh, the people that we surround ourselves with can, are is, can even easily influence what we do. So it's important that we uh, check on who, is, who are our friends and who are our networks and who surrounds us and what do we hear on a daily basis every time that we wake up. Then we need to remember that uh, through our obedience, many will follow us into the fold. If he did for them, that is now the Israelites. He has not changed. Our God has not changed. All we need to do is that uh, we need to always remember that he promised and he delivered, uh, he delivered and he continues delivering to those who are obedient to him. In conclusion, uh, let's continue to trust and obey. Trust and obey our God. Trust and obey uh, his word. Trust and obey in obedience. Trust and obey 
uh, knowing that indeed our God is a, is a life and our God is waiting for us to continue doing his, what he expects us to do, just the same way that he, he did to the children of Israel. And may God bless each and every one of us as we uh, enter to this Sabbath day. In Jesus' name we pray. Listening to my elder, John Yakundi, uh, something which came into my mind, he read about the nations which stood between Canaan and the nation of Israel. And uh, I had the many names, the Jebusites, the Hittites, the Amorites, and so forth. And these were big nations with organized and mighty armies. And here was a small nation with no organized army coming out of slavery. But God promised them that he will go before them and give to them what he had promised. What a mighty God we worship. This God we worship is the Almighty, is the Holy One. And when we look around us, we see evidence of his power. I look around, I see the vegetation, the flowers, and God just spoke them into being. And in everything that is we see around us, whether the animals, whatever it is, God spoke them into being. That's how mighty our Lord is. And I want to say this evening, the same God who promised the children of Israel has a promise for you and for me. And the promise is he will be with us all the days of our lives. So whatever storms may come your way, God will be with you. So, is there any reason why when we go to sleep, we should not sleep soundly? Is there any reason when we go out during the day that we should not have peace? That our Lord is go to go before us. So, no wonder, Paul, in the book of Philippians, 4, 6 to 7, Philippians 4, 6 to 7 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. So as we come to the end of our fellowship this evening, I just want to say, may we hold on to that promise that our God will go before us. Not only that, he has a good plan for each one of us, which will be realized if we allow him to do so. I just want to close by saying grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you and see you tomorrow morning. Thank you.